Oh, they're so pretty. <laughs> Hi. All of you in the Southern Hemisphere are probably thinking, yawn, my Phalaenopsis have been blooming for months now and it's a beautiful spectacle. And I'm like going, yay, good for you. And thank you so much for you that are now almost in full spring mode for still watching if you choose to do so. For the rest of us, however, we probably here in the Northern Hemisphere are now sort of gearing our Phalaenopsis orchids up to hopefully spiking. Then we get the blooms come winter, late winter into spring. And then, hello, Southern Hemisphere. We will be so happy to be warming up. <laughs> well, all of you are, you know, cooling down. But anyway, two things I want to address here, and I hope I remember them both. If not, please remind me in the comments. Two things though. When it comes to getting your Phalaenopsis orchids to spike, so much information is out there about you have to give them a temperature drop so that they can then induce spikes. Okay, but what does that mean? I am in southern Spain, I have 30 degrees Celsius for the most part of four or five months and they are in vegetative growth right now. What kind of temperature drop are you talking about? You may be elsewhere where the warmest temperature you have is 25 degrees Celsius and whatever. You see, I don't want to have the information just stand as is temperature drop will induce spiking in your Phalaenopsis orchids because it's all relative. It doesn't mean anything to me if I don't know what you mean. These are warm to hot growers. When some people say temperature drop, immediately the brain kind of switches to, they need a chill. And I wonder how many times that has happened in the past where somebody has heard temperature drop. I'm gonna give my Phalaenopsis a temperature drop so that she will spike. And lo and behold, the poor thing died because it got too cold. So here's the thing. Temperature drop does not mean chill it means temperature drop. And I don't know why in the orchid hobby, our brains associate temperature drop with chill. So I hope that this video will help save your Phalaenopsis, including getting them to spike. If, as in my case, my complex hybrids are used to warm temperatures of 30 degrees Celsius, let's just keep it around that margin. If they get a temperature drop, down to 20 degrees Celsius, which is within their range of what they like, 18 being the minimum. But if they get a temperature drop of 20, I'm not even going all the way down to their minimum, that is a temperature drop that will induce spikes. If in your case, you have your Phalaenopsis tolerate temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius, but you cannot get the temperatures lower than let's say 30 or 28 degrees Celsius. It is still a temperature drop. It is different from what they had consistently for several months. A 10 degree temperature drop in Celsius, and I've got the conversions up on the screen for Fahrenheit, will induce spikes because it's not about what temperature is the orchid needing to spike. It's about the temperature drop in itself. I hope that makes sense. Now, my orchids are outside, not because I want them to have a temperature drop. If it got too cold out here and that is below 18, 17 degrees Celsius, oh boy, I'm putting them inside because they don't like it that cold. Neither do I, mind you. So yeah, I guess uh, Stalonopsis is my spirit animal. <laughs> oh, spirit plant. But you see where I'm getting at? They are outside here, and this is my second point, because of light. Phalaenopsis complex hybrids can take so much more light than we give them credit for. The only thing they can't take is heat. So direct sun with their fleshy structures is a huge no-no. But if, for example, I had a space on my patio where I could cover them up in some kind of white bubble, a huge white bubble, and not have any direct sun touching them, they would be able to, and they would absolutely love the heat of my patio during the warmer months of the year. And they would love the light, just so long there's no direct sun on the leaves. And that doesn't mean just here in Southern Spain, in general. Now, they can tolerate the weaker morning direct sun and the weaker afternoon direct sun. 
But if you find yourself in the warm months of the year and you are able to have your Phalaenopsis orchids outside, and then you say, well, they can take afternoon sun, no, they cannot. Because the temperature is still too warm, there is no cooling effect when then the sun hits them, even if there is a breeze. Speaking of breeze, it's quite blustery today, but... <laughs> So having airflow around their structures late afternoon, when it is warm as well, plus sun hitting them directly, it's not going to make a difference because the air itself is also hot. There is no cool down of the leaves, which is the purpose of airflow. Not just to dry out stems, airflow is a big cool down factor for structures that are exposed to direct sun, that is why some orchids can take direct sun simply because where they live out in nature, they are exposed to it all day long. But where they are exposed to direct sun all day long, there is so much airflow that the orchid can actually handle it and the structures don't heat up. So careful with the terminology late afternoon sun if you are growing your Phalaenopsis outdoors, even though for the rest of the day they are in bright shade. The gentler direct sun in the morning, that is not a problem because things do cool off a little bit at night and the sun hasn't got that heat index yet the moment it rises and for the first hour, hour and a half. But you see, these terminologies are so broad and I'm not implying anybody has taken them as gospel, but I think it is important not to have these diluted phrases out there apply them to your collection and then have something go wrong because again, late afternoon sun is <laughs> completely different here as opposed to if you were further north in Europe or the United States or wherever or further south in the southern hemisphere where the late afternoon sun might be weaker during the summer months. If that makes sense, you've got to let me know in the comments. But you see, the more light they get, not direct sun. The more light they get, the more abundant the flower spike will bloom out once they've had that significant temperature drop that does not imply chill. <laughs> Goodness me, <laughs> I hope all that made sense. Anyway, the follow-up video of my Phalaenopsis in spring will have you bemused saying, yeah, right. She said this, that, and the other in fall of 2022. Here we are in spring of 2023 and look at our fowls four blooms, three blooms, bud blast, etc. Well, let me tell you something. I cannot maintain these kinds of light levels throughout the winter and spring season while they're inside because it's far too cold out here for them because I do not use artificial lights, nor do I supplement with heat. So what they're getting now is a massive, massive treat. I'm loving it. They're loving it but they will be confined to some seriously harsh conditions for about five, six months, and that automatically reduces my bloom count. But I hope this video has the reverse effect when it comes to your Phalaenopsis, and that what I just talked about will give you a bumper, bumper blooming for the spring of 2023 for us in the Northern Hemisphere, and you in the Southern Hemisphere, thank you if you've watched all the way to the end, even though this video kind of didn't apply, but maybe in the future, in your next go around with getting your fowls to spike, you might want to revisit it and then see if you can't increase your bloom count. It was wonderful to stand in some form of a breeze <laughs> staring at my fowls. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Fowls, fowls, fowls everywhere. Ah, oh, I'm loving it. Take care. Bye.